Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you so much. Lord, in you, we hope. We have a great expectation. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, I'm not going to cheer at you today. I'm going to be grateful and thankful and full of joy. For the Lord is good. His mercy endures forever. I'm going to read to something. This is our call to worship. And we thank God for this opportunity to gather. Anybody glad that you have a church home? Look at somebody next to you. Are they saved? Huh? Are they saved? You in good company. Amen. This is the congregation of the upright. The person next to you is going to praise God in a way that's going to inspire you. And if they don't, raise yours up so you can inspire them. I hear feedback or something. I watch it when I get home. I watch it later. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Is he the Lord? Hallelujah. Let me read this Psalm 147. Praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our God. For it is pleasant and praise is comely or fitting. Yeah, yeah. The Lord does build up Jerusalem. He gathers together the outcast of Israel. Yeah. He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. And let me just say this. I know that we reverence God's word, right? That's why these people right here are standing up. These couple That's of people. Right. Yeah. It's because they, I'm not making y'all stand up. I'm just talking. Uh, that's why they're standing up. Because they remember it's God's word. But when the word of God speaks something that stirs your spirit up, that you, you're not interrupting the word to shout. Okay? I'm just, I'm just trying to help us here. Right. We are spiritual people. Yeah, we are not in prison. No. And the tradition of church is not supposed to handcuff you from the Holy Ghost. Right. Listen what the scripture said. I just felt this in the Holy Spirit. This is what the scripture said. It says, he heals the broken in heart and binded up their wounds. Yeah. Somebody had to shout on that. You're not interrupting the preacher to shout and to ascribe your appreciation and value to God for healing your broken heart. We come here to worship God. Y'all don't come here to watch me read and, and be, be a minister right. Y'all didn't come for that. We came to build up each other by worshiping God. And send the atmosphere to run devils out of here that people might have brought in. But they don't think it's in here until somebody bring them in. Okay, let me keep reading and I'm getting out the way for our worship ministry that's coming next. All right, he heals the broken in heart, he binds up their wounds, he tells the number of the stars and he calls them by their names. Great is our Lord and of great power. His understanding is infinite. The Lord lifted up the meek. He casted the wicked down to the ground. Sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving. Sing praise upon the heart unto our God. He covers the heaven with clouds. He prepares the rain for the earth. He makes grass grow upon the mountains. He gives the beasts their food and the young ravens which cry. He delighted not in the strength of the horse. He taketh not pleasure in the legs of man. The Lord 
takes pleasure in them that fear him. In those that hope in his mercy. Hallelujah. Can we just open our minds and give God from our heart adoration and praise. Hallelujah. 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 There's no body like you.
name of the Lord. And I feel like the elder who said, I'm not going to be your cheerleader today. No, you ought to already be able to recollect something in your mind and there ought to be already a stirring in your belly that says, God's been good to me. When I didn't deserve it, when I wasn't worthy, when he should have cast me out, when he should have threw me away, but he stuck in there with me. He held
God. And that's going to take some lessons. Life's lessons teach us how to walk with God. Life's lessons teach us how to talk with God. Life's lessons create a fellowship with God that is irreplaceable, Sister Tina. What brought you to the place you're at now? It was life. Life's lessons, life's trials, and even life's blessings. to go with God because I trust him. Yeah. You see, there was a season when I thought I trusted God. Y'all can take y'all seat if y'all want to. If you feel like running a man of God, then gave you the invitation to shout and run if you want to. It won't bother me none. I just want you to be free today. I want you to be healed today. I want you to walk in power today. I want you to own your victory today. and life has challenges and being a mom I have learned that life sometimes throws you a curveball that you ain't ready for Amen. and I found myself in a season where I thought I was trusting God and I even had dialogue with God to tell God you know I trust you I felt like Peter when he told me no you don't and I was like but God you know I trust you I serve you I'm at church every week sometimes three and four times a week he said your attendance means nothing amen if you don't trust me he said you can be at church seven days a week this is me and God talking I don't know what kind of conversations y'all done had but we had a conversation in this talk I said well God I'm serving you I'm praying for your people Lord I'm fasting he said that don't mean nothing if you don't trust me even even the devil believes that God is God but listen if we don't trust him our belief system means little but we have to come to a place that even in the midst of our adversities even in the midst of our crisis even in the midst of our trials that we find a place of healing and I will be honest with you in saying it wasn't until recently that I realized I really wasn't trusting God back then but now I'm at a place where he I'm all in with him and I ain't talking about when I was uh, just a, a deacon's wife that I wasn't trusting I'm talking about since I've been your pastor's wife you see there was a season where I was having such a struggle with one of my children y'all know her name amen it ain't no secret amen and I don't have nothing to hide anyway but we were going through some torrential times and it felt like the Lord was putting me on display putting us on display so that people could see what it looks like to suffer and still do ministry because a lot of times what happens is when people go through a struggle, the first thing they get rid of is ministry. But the reality is when you're in your greatest struggle, that's when God is calling you to your most important line of ministry. He is calling you to the front line to be able to take hits, amen, to take assault. So somebody who can't handle the assault behind you, amen, will be able to endure it and keep standing.
that's anointed. Life lessons. Somebody shout life lessons. As a mother, listen, there is no absolute, my sister said absolute one week, but there is no manual that is absolute. There is no manual that can determine the life situations that you and I are going to face along this journey. The very thing you thought your children would not do will be the very thing they just might do. Listen, I don't care if you casting out demons all over the land. The devil will try to ride up in your house and come for you. Amen. He will try to bring an assault against you. But life's lessons will teach us how to respond and how to react. Somebody said, well, Sister Trina, what's the scripture for today? Well, I'm going to jog you over to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11. Actually, I'm going to just start at the top because there were some warnings to Israel, amen, about their past. And I just want to help us today, and it's not no for real just Mother's Day message. It's a Kingdom Day message. This is for believers across the net land. It's for all genres. All it's for whoever. Somebody say whoever. Whoever. In the reading, it says in First Corinthians chapter ten, and I don't have the King James. I probably have a CSV or something to that effect. But it says, now do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud, all passed through the sea, and all were baptized into Moses in uh, the cloud and in the sea. They all ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Yes. Yeah. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them since they were struck down in the wilderness. Now these things took place as examples for us so that we will not desire evil things as they did. Don't become idolaters as some of them were. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and got up to party. Yeah. Let us not commit sexual immorality as some of them did and in a single day 23,000 people died. Yeah. Let us not test Christ as some of them did and were destroyed by snakes. And don't complain as some of them did and were killed by the, the destroyer. These things happened to them as examples and they were written for our instruction on whom the ends of the ages have come. So whoever stands must be careful not to fall. No temptation has come upon you except that which is common to humanity, but God is faithful. Who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with temptation he will also provide a way out so that you may be able to bear it. Listen, God is incredible because he keeps us even in the midst of our foolishness. Yes, yes, Lord. I want to go real quick to the Message Bible. I know I read it in this CSV Bible or something to that effect, but y'all could take y'all seats. This, this, I should have read it in the Message in the, in the first place, but I'm going to go over here and read it because I think it's going to make it relevant to somebody. Remember our history, friends, and be warned. All our ancestors were led by the providential cloud and taken miraculously through the sea. They went through the waters in a baptism like ours as Moses led them from enslaving death to salvation life. They all ate and drank identical food and drink meals provided by God. They drank from the rock, God's fountain, for them that stayed with them wherever they were. Wow. And the rock was Christ. Yeah. But just experience God's wonders and grace didn't seem to mean much. Right. Most of them were defeated by temptation. I'm going to put a pin there. Defeated by temptation. Yeah. You see, there are lessons that we learn by watching other people. Yeah. And then there are lessons that we learn through our own personal experience. Yeah. Some lessons are bought, yeah. some are taught, and some are caught. Yeah. Yeah. That's all true. Come on. 
Yeah. Say yeah. that. Yeah. Keeping on reading, it says, but just experienced God's wonders and grace didn't seem to mean much. Most of them were defeated by temptation during the hard times in the desert, and God was not pleased. Yeah. The same thing could happen to us. We must be on guard so that we never get caught up in wanting our own way as they did. And we must not turn our religion into a circus like they did. First the people party, they was kicking it, parlaying all right. They was flossing and flashing and they was doing the thing. I put that in there. Amen. Message ain't that cold, right? We must not be sexually promiscuous. That means a thought. And I'm gonna throw one out there in the vernacular that's way crazy, but it ain't talking about whack. Uh -oh. Yeah, y'all know the song, youngins. I see them chuckling. They know, hold your head back up, baby. We know what you listening to. Old people are like, Sister Trina, what's whack? I can't tell you that. <laughs> Well, why you bring it up? Because I'm talking to generations of children who do know what it means. Yeah. They sweating right now because I said it. Come on. Okay? Yeah, mm -hmm. And God launched an epidemic of poisonous snakes. We must be careful not to stir up discontent. Discontent, discontent destroy them. These are all warning markers. Danger! Somebody shout danger. danger. In our history books written down so that we don't repeat their mistakes. Our position in the history, in, in, in the story, are parallel. They at the beginning, we at the end. And we are just as capable of messing up as they were. So don't be so naive and self-confident. You're not exempt. You can fall flat on your face as easily as anyone else. Forget about self-confidence. It's useless. Useless. Cultivate God confidence. No test or temptation that comes your way is beyond the course of what others have had to face. All you need to remember is that God will never let you down. He'll never let you be pushed past your limit. He'll always be there to help you come through it. Hallelujah. So I just want to say this to you youngins out there. When your mama tell you something to do or, or try to lead you in a way of truth or try to steer you away from a path that is deadly or a way of destruction, she's only telling you because she already been down that road right there and she knows where all the pitfalls is. She knows where the potholes are. She knows that it's going to turn into a dead end. She knows you're going to get your feelings hurt. It's a lot of trouble wounded mamas out here because we got our feelings hurt. It's a, a lot of children who are enduring hardships from their mama because their mama went through some trauma and didn't know how to recover from it. So you got wounded mamas trying to help kids navigate through this course of life and they are failing because mama didn't get healed. I'm just trying to help somebody today. We're wondering why our children, I have a child, and, and man, and sometimes both of them have a deaf ear to instruction. And it's not that I'm trying to uh, govern her entire life or his entire life. The fact of the matter is I already see the journey you're taking. I wear a scar to remind me of the journey I went down that I didn't have to because I could have watched what mama and daddy did and learned that that ain't what I wanted. God never ordained for me to be with no dope dealers. I chose that thing.
got to get healed. Because there is no manual on life, but there is a mother in your life. And if your mother gives you instruction that you know is a way of truth, take your mother's advice because she's only trying to help you. I know for me, I want to put this apology to my daughter out there because I know I'm hard. I know I'm hard. I know it. I know I'm on her top, as y'all say as kids. Mommy, you on my top. Yeah, I sure am. Because you're t what you don't do right is going to cost me eventually. And it's a lot of grandmas out here paying the cost, hallelujah, because the children wouldn't listen. And in a culture we live in, we got a culture where people can go, our children can go to this person's house and this person's house and talk about what they mama ain't doing or talk about what they mama said or how they mama coming for them. But listen, if you don't live in that house, you need to... somebody today because the reality is listen mama understands because she's in close proximity that's not saying mama can't take no tutelage from a mother who has been there and who, who has guided and navigated through that ocean and understood understood what it looks like to get to a place called better but if you a mama that ain't got to better yet A visual of what he wanted me to do today. I didn't have a whole lot to say because he told me what to do. I need four chairs in front of me if you could. Four chairs, four chairs. The scripture I wanted us to really look at was in that verse 11 where it said these things happened to them as examples and they were written for our instruction on whom the ends of the ages have come. And when I think about the, the Bible, I think about how many lessons are uh, sandwiched in between the front and the back of this book. And I thought about uh, one scenario, and I thought, I thought I was losing my mind when I was reading it, but I was like, I know this happened before, and it did, and so I was in Genesis chapter 26, and I was reading about Isaac and how he had went to Abimelech and how he told Abimelech that his wife was his sister. And then I was like, but I thought that was Abraham. I thought I was tripping, y'all. I was like, I thought that was Abraham who did that. So I started researching. I was going back through Genesis, and then I came to Genesis 20, and I saw where Abimelech uh, had the same encounter with Abraham. And Abraham had told Abimelech that Sarah was his sister too, and it brought some havoc on. Abimelech had a dream, and he was like, I don't know why he did that, trying to get me messed up with God. Same thing happened with Isaac. Isaac had Rebecca told Abimelech. It was a different generation of Abimelech. Abimelech meaning father or king. And so Abimelech, he told him the same thing. He was like, why are you trying to get me messed up with God, though? Wow. Wow. And so Abraham, Isaac had repeated the same thing that his father had done. Wow. But then I went on a little further and I started reading and I saw how uh, Abraham had dug some wells, and the wells had called li caused livelihood to come to a uh, garage, G-E-R-A-R. -R. And then I looked and I saw how the, the Philistines had came and filled the holes, and so they had to come back through. Isaac had to recollect what, what caused his father them to walk in a place of blessedness, and he recalled that his daddy had dug some holes. So he went back and he redug the holes. I'm going somewhere with this. He redug the holes because he knew that when you redig the holes, it brings vitality, it brings life into the area that you're in. And there are some people in this room today who God said, you need to go back and redig some holes. You allow the enemy to cover up the holes that brought you into a place of increase. Amen. It was prayer. It was prayer. 
I got to looking at it and I said, wow. Isaac went back and he re, re dug the holes. And as a matter of him redigging the holes, the Bible says that uh, there became some quarreling around him. And so he named one of the, uh, the, the, the whales quarreling. The name is in, in here in this text right here. But he renamed it quarreling, quarreling arguing, basically. Yeah. And then um, the Bible talks about he had another one that he dug. And it kind of meant uh, division or strife. Mm -hmm. But then he kept digging. And he ultimately walked into a place of blessedness. <clears throat> and he had people arguing, talking about that water is ours. Right. And that's how the enemy is going to try to come for you when you start redigging stuff in your family. You start dealing with the issues and then you start trying to bring life back to your family. The enemy is going to come and try to taunt you. Uh -huh. And that first taunt is ultimately to keep you from going to the next well and digging and bringing life, causing life to spring up in your family. Well, on to the example that God told me to give. It sounded crazy to me. And I was like, Lord, on Sunday morning, you want me to do that? And he said, yeah. And I said, you can't tell Pastor Ron to do that? <laughs> you know, he, he'll do all that stuff, Jesus. He wearing a uniform every week for you, Jesus. Well, this morning's assignment is a little challenging. But it's also a diagnostic to see what we have in the house. I need four young ladies who have been going through hell and high water to come and take these chairs. Jesus. 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 I'm talking about you've been fighting. You've been crying, you've been pressing, you're trying to come up out of that hole, but you can't seem to come out. you saying, listen, I know it's better for me outside this pit, but I can't seem to get out, but I'm trying to come out of it. Take the chair. One of my mentors, I'm, I'm so grateful for the one who is here, Apostle Jackie Brown had an I but I'm going with God. We got mothers in the church who 
have been called this mother group. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 And this morning I need Sister Shakita to come up, Mother Shakita. Amen. Yeah. Mother Alice. Yeah. Mother Lynn. Yeah. Mother Butler. Hallelujah. And if y'all could bring me four more chairs. Because I don't want them to have to stand. All right. Unless they want to. I'm going to move out the way. And I'm going to do what God said do. Yes, Jesus. Put one in front of each woman. One in front of each woman. Hallelujah, Lord God. Glory. Hallelujah. And right now, Mother, is there a chair in front of Sister Lakita? Okay. And right now, we're at Mother right in front of Sister Marquita. How that worked out, God does a thing. I'm going to tell you, He does a thing. He does a thing. Talk about restoration in the house. What's about to happen is we are about to demonstrate that there are mothers in House of Prayer. And what these mothers are about to do is they are about to fulfill the assignment and the mandate that is on their life. We're not walking in just titles no more. We're not having no title and no operation. We are walking in the power of God. We are going to be prayer warriors and not prayer warriors. Amen. We are not going to be just carrying things. We're going to assign words to women and they are going to create miracles. We make But it's real. Yeah. We can't carry these titles and not walk in the manifestation of them, yeah. in the operation of them. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Come on. This morning, these women of God are going to pour into these other women who have been going through hell and high water. They're going to demonstrate what it looks like. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To be a mama in the house. When I was a little girl,
You know what I said is a lot of mamas here trying to leave their children with trauma. Well, today's God's gonna heal your trauma. He's gonna heal the wounds that's in your heart. He's gonna heal the brokenness that's in your heart. Is there something there? Some disappointments? Some letdowns? Today, God, go sit down, sir. Go sit down. Go sit down. I'll hold you in a minute. You're going to be in Today, God's going to heal some stuff. I'm going to have my sister here. She's going to pray with you. And God's about to start healing some areas. That's why I'm here. It ain't no accident that y'all came to Kansas City. He's going to heal you. He's going to break you free from those strongholds. So you can leave these princesses the right way. This is what God's going to do for you. This time is going to pray. Nisha, come here, baby. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't there a mama in the house? That's where she at. Oh, 
conviction. When we start getting preached to, it brings conviction. It brings healing. It brings restoration. Healing is happening here. Jesus and it was a confirmation. I told you I was in between a couple of things, a couple of messages, and I thought maybe I'm off or something. But I wondered why Mary went to her cousin Elizabeth's house. When she was with child. They both were with child. And at first I thought it was merely because they sent her there. You know how when we was when our parents was young kids and when they got pregnant early, they would send them down south for grandma them to raise them. But I said that wasn't the reason. Mary went to Elizabeth's house to find agreement in the spirit. To confirm the purpose that was within her belly. Mary went to her cousin Elizabeth's house so that the spirit can be quickened within her. Because when she walked in the room and gave her salutation and her greeting, the Bible says that John, who was in the belly of Elizabeth, began to leap. And we're in an hour, women of God. So glory God, where you and I are going to begin to speak a word into the spirit of another believing sister and her baby is going to jump. I need y'all to hear me in the spirit. Sister Lisa, I declare to you in the name of Jesus that this is the hour, sister, where your baby is about to Yeah, the sir. 
harvest that we've had. But what the Lord told me that is that we're in an hour where the people of God who have been comfortable watching on screen need to get out of your comfort zone. And you need to get to the house of God because it's where your healing is. Church. 
so holy. We but this just serves. I didn't understand the purpose before, but this serves to remind us that God is calling us to do kingdom. You can't be a gossiper and do kingdom, y'all. We cannot. We either go do kingdom or we might as well stay at home. It's time to do kingdom. That compromise, you got to come out of it. Compromise is because of convenience. And you can conveniently find yourself in hell because of that compromise. It's time to do kingdom. Perhaps you're here and you just need God to deal with you in some areas. And you're saying, Sister Trina, I keep trying to do kingdom, but I keep failing. Well, we're going to ask you to come to the altar, spread out, keep your distance, but... If you're really trying to do kingdom, I want you to come to the altar.